Hi there, my name is Martin Williams. Recently I've written this book, 101 Games to Play While Socially Distancing. This has been my attempt to channel 10 years of experience in the early years into one book. I've tried to come up with the best 101 games I can think of that use social distancing as part of their rules. Uh, it's not been easy. And a lot of the things we value the most have kind of been chucked out the window. You know, like human connection, uh, playing with objects, all that kind of stuff. But in the end, I've come up with 101 games that uh, cover the entire curriculum. Well-being is a massive part of this book, uh, and you know, well-being has been tested recently in ways never before. So it's all about human connection, getting children, enjoying the company of others, but in a, a safer and socially distanced context. Okay, I'm gonna show you some exciting games from the book, just a, a bit of a selection, so let's dive in. Okay, here are a few games I've just invented completely for the book. Uh, all you need for this is a trusty piece of chalk and you go outside and you do some markings on the floor. Uh, there's a bit of a high-tech visual for you here, this piece of paper sucks to the wall. This is a mini scale version of what it'll look like outside. You draw really big boxes on the floor. All these boxes are probably about five meters apart in reality, really, really sort of over a big area basically. These, for the first game, are the, the caves. This first game is called Asteroid. These are the underground caves. Basically, the children start off one person in one cave each. It's a bit like What's the Time to Wolf this game. You basically say a number, and the children are going to walk that, that number of steps out of the cave. So you say, for example, five, and say the child here goes one, two, three, four, five. Then you might say two, they go one, two, and all the children are walking all around out of the cave. At any given moment, you will shout, asteroid. That is the cue for the children to run back to the cave they were in, and if you get to the cave, you're safe. You could be a bit harsh and do a countdown, you're like five, four, three, and if they're not back by the time they get to zero, they are out. But there you go, asteroid. Another game is Shark Attack. Uh, in this one, these, uh, again, they're kind of like under sea caves this time. These around them are the shark infested waters. The children are going to be moving around these waters. Have some kind of instrument, something like a drum is perfect for this. If they hear the drum, the shark is here, basically. They have to rush back to the underground cave and hide. And if you get back in time, the shark will not get you. Okay, you can move in different ways for this one. They could, for example, be jumping around the waters, or they could be hopping or skipping, or they could be moving like fish. You can move like, you know, like a jellyfish or something, or like a whale, or any of that kind of stuff. Uh, but there we go, shark attack. Another good game is the box jumping game. What you do for this one, start in one box, and you're gonna jump to another box, and all the children are gonna be jumping at the same time. You can do a bit of counting as well. You can count how many jumps it takes to get from one box to the next. Like one, two, three, four, five, six, and off you jump to the next box as well. Uh, so there we go, just a few games with uh, chalk on the floor. One of the beauties of socially distanced games is you will know loads anyway. Lots of the classic early education games have a bit of social distancing in them. For example, hide and seek could be made for social distancing. Another good one is uh, shadow tag. If you're gonna play any type of tag, Shadow tags are one to go for with the children. They don't touch each other, but they tag your shadow. There's other games you just need a little, little bit of a tweak. Things like What's the Time, Mr. Wolf. A little bit of a tweak and you can get it great for uh, social distancing. Another one is uh, Red Light, Green Light. And there's lots of them. Uh, and in the book, you know, there's a whole array of classic games you will know that you can either play just as they are or with a little bit of a, a change and are fantastic for social distancing. Okay, some maths games now. Number one is the, is the action dice, very exciting this one. We need for this is some kind of wooden cubes. Uh, I made these myself out of a fence post that I sawed up, but it's not essential, any kind of wooden cubes. You draw on some actions. It could be something like a star for star jumps, uh, two feet for jumping, hopping, uh, going on your tiptoes, all that kind of stuff. Also just got a simple dice with dots on, but you can just have a numerals dice. The children sit in a circle, socially distanced, and you roll the two dice. Uh, nice easy one to start with, one hop. They're going to stand up and just do one hop. Uh, go on the tiptoes five times. And it's just kind of as simple as that. It's like a fun action one-to-one -one counting game. The tricky one is this, go with the roaring. You love this one. Uh, the idea of this, you roar, you go roar, roar, like that. Uh, it's tricky because you can't count with your mouth. You either have to count with your head or on your fingers. So quite a bit trickier. But there you go, action dice. Next is number dancing, again. Sit them in a circle, socially distanced, two meters apart. Sit them on spots is good for any of those circles, get circle games. They all stand up. Put some pumping tune on, some kind of disco track or something. Uh, give them a number. It could be, for example, number four. You're going to show them a dance sequence, all with number four in it, for example. Uh, 
It could be four moves like this, like one, two, three, four. Just the music, four the other way. One, two, three, four. Four up, two, three, four. And four down, one, two, three, four. Then you just kind of roll the dice and get one. It could be three. And you just kind of do the same thing again, same routine, but a different number of times. Like one, two, three, one, two, three. Keep going, different numbers, same routine. They start to understand that six is much bigger than one, because for six you're going on for ages. With one it's just a case of doing this. So it's good for experiencing numbers in a raw form such as that. Okay, here are some rope and string games. All you need for this is a really long piece of string, uh, something like this, probably at least 15 meters long is what you're looking for. Or you could use rope or wool or any long piece of material would be perfect. What you do, you mark off two meter sections on the rope or string. I've got these pieces of duct tape I just stuck on. Uh, there's one there at the end, and then you go two meters along, there's another one, and just all the way down the string, there's these two meter uh, sections. Same on the rope, I've got same kind of idea. Here's the first one, here's the second one, and you get the idea of that. Some that ribbon would be perfect, but a little piece of ribbon tied on will be perfect as well. What you do, the children are going to hold the rope or the string at two meter sections to kind of socially distance. But there's a few fun games you can do to really bring it all to life. Here we go, let's have a look at a couple of the games. Number one is uh, follow the leader. Very simple, this one. This is probably best done adult led, I would say. The adult to kind of show them how to do it and model it. The adult goes at the start of the line, holding the, the rope. Then uh, the next child goes to the next bit. And you basically have a long line of children behind you, all two meters apart. And then you start moving, off you go. You, you just walk around basically and the children follow. You can walk in different ways. You can go you know, in a circle, you could go in a zigzag, you could go really, really low, you go really, really high. Um, you could potentially do something like jumping, but you see how they get on first, start easy. But uh, yeah, you can always make it trickier if you want. So yeah, a nice little intro to broke games. Another good game is the, uh, the movement train one. This is an absolute classic early phonics game uh, and great for uh, social distancing as well. I'll show you with a string this time, it's basically the same idea. The adult again goes at the front and they are best think adult led these uh, rope and string games. The adult goes to the front, you've got some instruments as well. I've got uh, a drum for example. The children hold onto the string or rope and what you do, I'm, uh, you're going to walk around your outdoor area playing the instrument. If it's a drum, you're going to walk around and the children are going to move in a way that kind of suits the sound. If it's a drum, it could be something like stamping, like giants. You could go really, really quick, like get them moving really, really fast. Or you could go really, really slow, get them moving really slow. You could do it really quiet, really loud, all that kind of stuff. Different instruments will lead to different types of movements. If you've got a triangle, you could do one lap of the drum, then come back and use a triangle. And it's all like, you know, a little sneaky on the tiptoes and being like little mice and all that kind of thing. Uh, tambourine, for example. Be all kind of like shaking the hips or slithering like snakes and all that kind of thing. Great for just early phonics and you know listening to sounds. Another good one is the rope train. The idea of this, you get the children to stand in a socially distanced line to start with. Something like on spots two meters apart is great. They are now the trains and the carriages waiting at the station. Get the string, mark out some cones in a big circle round your outside area. That's the track, that's what the train is going to go around. One lucky person is a train driver. They're going to have the end of the rope. Uh, they're, going to, they're going to walk around the track, dragging the rope or the string behind them on the floor. They'll get back to the station and pick up the first carriage. That lucky person will hold on to the string two meters down and off they'll go. A train and a carriage are sat all around the track. They'll go back, they'll pick up a third carriage, then a fourth. And in the end, you'll have a big train of children all walking around the track. Fabulous for you know, the train lovers out there. Okay, a few circle games now that need a bit of a visual. So here it is. These crosses are children. They're sitting two meters apart. Uh, around the outside, there is an outer ring. This could be something like spots, or it could be cones, whichever. This outer ring is two meters from where the children are sitting. It's a basic idea of this. Okay, here are some great games. Number one, very simple, is swap places. In this one, the children are sitting here. You pick two children, it could be Amelia and Bobby, for example. Imagine Amelia is sitting here, Bobby is sitting here. What they're going to do, they're going to stand up and they're going to go to the outer ring and they're going to run around the outer ring and end up at the empty, empty space where the other person was sitting. It's kind of as simple as that. Then you pick two different children 
and they do the same. Go around, swap places. It's really that simple. Um, yeah, so give it a go. Number two is fruit salad. This is kind of similar to this, but a slightly harder version. It's kind of a classic game, this one. You probably know this one anyway. I've just sort of adapted it very slightly for social distancing. Basically, fruit salad. Give them all, all the children, a fruit name. Pick about four fruit to start with in your mind before you do it. And you go around and you go a bit like apple, pear, strawberry, banana. Apple, pear, strawberry, banana. Apple, pear, a bit like that. Um, the big trick with this is trying to get them to remember what their fruit is. That is the, the true target. If they can do that, fantastic. Then what you say, you say one of the names of the fruit. It could be banana. All the bananas will stand up. They'll go to this outer ring and they'll run around um, and they'll swap places again. It's very similar to the swap places game. The big trick with both these games is trying to get them to run in the same direction, which is not as easy as it sounds at all in reality, but you know, pick either clockwise or anti-clockwise and try and uh, show them how to do it. Okay, I hope you found that selection of games useful. I think the big thing is not to get too stressed and it's not gonna look perfect in reality. We can only do what we can do as the early years teachers at the moment. It's really, really tricky circumstances. Uh, if you wanna know the full 101 games, you can either buy the book, you know, the ebook or the paperback on Amazon. Uh, also, there's an online version on my website as well. Uh, I've put together a training course. It's well, the entire 101 games. I've tried to do it in a fast paced, punchy way. So you get the whole 101 games in about an hour. Uh, if you wanna access that training, it's at earlyimpactlearning.com forward slash 101. Okay, good luck and take care.